We're in our training room with a piece of the white pine removal tree to cover some basic tools and techniques for hazard tree assessment. We're going to go generally from uh, least sophisticated to most sophisticated tools and techniques in this dialogue. First of all, when we walk up to a potential hazard tree, we do a visual tree assessment or we're looking for gross symptoms of, of tree hazard, I'm um, just using our eyes. If that doesn't satisfy us that the tree is perfectly sound, then we'll go to um, greater techniques or greater lengths to determine what may be wrong with this tree. Let's start at the ground. We'll want to do a root collar excavation, particularly if it's a tree we're going to remove. And for that, we have a few basic tools. One basic tool is a mason's hammer, sometimes also called a rock hammer, which can be useful for digging and excavating around the buttress roots of the tree. Also, for that same purpose, we have a simple garden trowel, just for digging. And then to clean up our roots a little bit, we have a little scraper. And that just gives us a better uh, visual presentation of, of what's going on with those roots. As we move up the tree, um, one of the easiest techniques to employ to determine if there's internal defect is sounding. And sounding we do with either a rubber mallet or a dead blow hammer. A rubber mallet has the advantage of if this is a live tree and I wish to preserve it, hitting this tree with a rubber mallet will not crush any tissue, will not cause any injury. And remember with the rubber mallet, we're going to hit the tree and listen for changes in the tonal quality that might indicate that we have a hollow, a crack, or some punky wood inside that tree. If we need to see a little bit better what's going on in, in some sort of defect up on the stem, we can use various chisels to clean up the bark and or gouges for that same purpose to do a little bit more uh, closer inspection. And we're still not satisfied that we know what's going on with that tree. The next technique we may employ is probing with a drill. Uh, this is a common ordinary cordless drill, but it has a, a special 12 inch long, 8 inch uh, wide stainless steel bit, so it can penetrate quite a distance into the tree. You can see we fashioned a little depth gauge here out of an old earplug, and what this will do will give us a stop um, that will stay on the drill bit and allow us to record how much sound wood we have. We're going to probe this tree um, and it strictly by feel, drilling in until or unless we feel some change in resistance. And if we do, we keep the drill going in the same direction, pull it out, and you see I'm cupping my hand underneath, and that'll allow me to inspect the tailings out of this hole to, to look for uh, discoloration or decay. If there had been a hollow in this tree, I would have felt a change in resistance. I would have pulled out my drill bit at that point in time, and I would have measured and recorded the amount of sound wood. Now, in order to get a good representation of what's happening inside this tree, remember, we can't see this, we're going to have to triangulate, in other words, drill from three positions on this tree, record our depths, and that will allow us to create an accurate picture two-dimensional picture of what's happening in this tree. We can go one step further in sophistication and use a tool called a resistograph that actually graphs and records the changes in resistance, the, the changes in the wood structure um, as we drill into a tree. Like our drill, uh, it, it employs drill technology. It uses a specialized drill bit This is a three millimeter um, bit. This particular model of the resistograph is going to go 40 centimeters into the tree. This can be used, therefore, on live trees because it has very little invasive um, drawbacks. In other words, it doesn't create a large wound. The resistograph makes use of a piece of graph paper, and a stylus will record changes in resistance as the drill penetrates the wood. And this becomes our permanent record of what's going on inside this tree. Again, like with the drill, we want to triangulate on this tree to get an accurate representation 
of what's happening inside. And so now I'm going to move around and I'm going to do some drilling and we're going to see what sort of uh, graphing results from the cracks that we know appear in this tree. I'm going to open up the cover. Ordinarily this would be closed, but open up the cover just so you can see, get a better representation of what's happening with this resistograph. And you can see this stylus moving across my graph paper. But we can see ups and up and down movements in our graph to indicate in, if, um, growth rings within the tree, the difference in resistance between early wood and late wood. We can see a few places where it bottoms out and that's where we're encountering the cracks. Now what I can do is I remove this graph paper and hold it up against my tree trunk in the, in the direction that I was drilling. Incidentally, I should have mentioned that this graph paper is uh, marked off in half inch increments that, that correspond to how far I was drilling. So in other words, I drilled into this tree almost 15 inches and I hold this up like this and try to orient it exactly as I drilled and I see, for instance, a slight di a dip here off the graph where this crack was encountered, a dip off the graph where this larger crack was encountered, and lots of fluctuation in between. A reading on a sound white pine, a tree that we know is sound, and did the same, using the same piece of graph paper, took a reading on this particular tree just to compare. And if you look Closely at, at this particular graph, you'll see the top line indicating greater resistance was our sound tree. And the bottom line, which in many cases goes right off the chart, um, is this particular sample of wood, indicating that this sample of wood is quite deteriorated. We want to close this segment of the program by reminding you, whether you're a sales rep or somebody on the crew, that the tools we have just so shown you have to be a regular part of your toolbox and used on a daily basis when you do hazard tree assessment, with the possible exception of the resistor graph which may get used in more specialized situations or where we need more information. The rest are simple hand tools that should be on your truck and that should be used anytime there is a question on a tree that is to be climbed or otherwise worked on.